pussy. She's all about the legs, from ice skating to now bootlegging. And she's also hotter than a tamale too. It's Denali, everyone. Hey queen, how you doing? I'm ready to talk everything Drag Race. So you on board or not? Ah! Well, I thought I was ready, but my camera just fell. Bootleg opinions. And do you want to tell us this suspicious background that you have in the back? Are you currently working and traveling and making that money, honey? I am working. I am at a hotel in the illustrious city of Regina. And it's not Regina. It's specifically supposed to be pronounced Regina. Real thick Regina. Smuggled bricks from China. You know what I'm saying? It's kind now, of Now about this season. <laughs> yes, baby. Like my man, China. Now about this episode, who stood out to you and which group do you think did well? I think the group that won, which was Megami, Maya, Nymphia, and Geneva, which I think for me as an underdog group is like so much more satisfying to win. It just is really like, oof, it's so satiating. I loved it. And some behind the scene tea. Now, Megami tweeted this, okay? She said that she ghostwrited a lot of the Queen's verses. So shout out to that. I saw that, I saw that tweet. And I also really loved her story arc. You know what Drag Race does? Like when she started crying about being picked last, that is just like Bugs Bunny rifle comes out of the bushes and it just shoots you and you're like, you're gone. I was like 100% under the impression that the moment she did that production was like, she's out of here, we're kicking her out. But in a weird drag race twist of fate, they actually took it as an opportunity for growth, which mm -hmm. I never would have suspected. Cause you saw it in my season, Lala, she at one point broke down, she went home. Girls say all the time like, oh my God, I, I'm gonna break down or whatever. And then they go home. And I'm really glad that they actually used it as an opportunity for her to grow. Cause she ate that challenge. Very that, whenever you're dealing with something, never do it on camera or in the workroom. Do it in the hotel room and suffer by yourself, okay? Because they won't take your PTSD and turn it into Emmys. Or use it against you. They'll use it to be like, let's break down this girl's psyche like Jan. Yeah, don't say <laughs> Now up for elimination is Q and Amanda. Who do you think did better? Was it the correct person that sashayed away? First of all, I'm in Canada and I had to watch the episode on like a bootleg, you on a bootleg like- VPN. Yeah, like VPN. We sell these. I watched the lip sync on this like weird, Twitter thread thing. So like, I couldn't fully catch everything. At certain points, my internet was weird, but whatever. How perfect is this? Well, for those that are watching, did you know that where you live affects what contents are streaming on your services? This video is sponsored by Surfshark, an award-winning VPN, a virtual private network. What is that? Where you live affects what contents are streaming on your services, ranging from movies, documentaries, TV shows, and more. For instance, our friends in the UK, Down Under, Canada, or anywhere in the world cannot watch what we watch and vice versa. But with the click of a button, you can change your location and access all the contents that you deserve. That is so cool. It is absolutely safe to use, even on public Wi-Fi. And with one subscription, you and your friends can use it in multiple devices, in different rooms, and pay one price only. And that just saves you so much money! That just makes it so easy. I'm gonna sign up right now. So what are you waiting for? Sasha, your way to the link in the description and use my code to get an extra three months free with Surfshark. Plus, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Now, I'm gonna switch my location to Canada to see what Denali is capable of watching. Oh my god! This is what I'm missing out while living in the US of A? But rewatching it this morning, it was hard to tell because this camera kept going only towards Q. But Amanda looked like she was eating it. She just like gives it like 150%. Every mimic is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she's like really energized. So I thought she had it. Q to me, I'm gonna say it, is very like two left feet, very awkward. Her walk is a little awkward. She has all the other skills. She's got obviously <laughs> amazing makeup, artistry, like can sew out the ass. But even like, as you saw in the challenge, she's an awkward mover. So I don't know if she really won that lip sync. It was hard to say. When she started twerking in the corset, I was like, ah! you know, I was like, I don't know about this. <laughs> I agree too. But then again, it's RuPaul's Drag Race and they can do whatever they want. It's not our show, it's their show. And shout out to Mandatory Meaning for coming out as trans and we love her so much. Congrats, Amanda. Everybody's coming out journey is different and everybody's trans experience is different too. So there's absolutely no rules of who you want to be and how you want to present yourself. 
Now, category E is pussycat wig. What do you look for in this category, aside from a pussycat wig? I don't want it to just be some bus driver wig you plopped on for brunch. I want it to A, mm -hmm. be artistically done, fit for your head, maybe have something more than just your average everyday pussycat wig. And B, how are you gonna like morph that into your look? How does it complement the look? How is it the standout part of the look? Because some of these runways, I'm not gonna lie, it, it felt like an afterthought. <laughs> so we'll get into it for sure. I know what you mean, because some of them, with that pussycat wick, it just looks like a brunch look. I Girl. know, I know. We first up have Morphine, embodying the pussycat experience from top to bottom. She has the hair, which is a pussycat wig, which is crystallized and red colored to match the wig. And then as we go down in this beautiful latex dress, she has the white stitches as if the cat scratched her entire dress. This dress is beautifully done and the proportions are correct too. We got the shoulders and then we got the hourglass of the big bust, the small tiny waist and this big hip, kind of like a dove slash pigeon. That's a compliment by the way. And then we go down and poops all the way out into a mermaid dress. And I also love the additional detail that she has with the long nails on the gloves. She scratches herself to reveal this beautiful scratched up makeup. I love it. And this outfit is really interesting and I love the play on words. Pussy cat, turn it into a cat. Like we have seen so many cat woman looks on Drag Race. And I really like that she took a risk with the silhouette. I like that she played with it. I think this is a, a, a complete toot for me. I love it. And to be honest, I've been kind of waiting for her to show this kind of level of drag because her looks this season have been kind of pedestrian, not gonna lie, because I did have a lot of expectation from her coming into the season and she finally showed us some drag. You better say that. Yeah, morphine comes from the busy and booked world of Miami brunches where it is like slap on a bathing suit and go. No, this it's no shade. Like, you have to be efficient. No, it's no shade, baby. It is what it is. You're working constantly. You have to be efficient. You're not going to come out to those brunches in gowns and in these massive things. So to see morphine in a different silhouette was exciting today. But yeah, uh, I, I kind of agree with you. I was waiting to see some like really exciting runways from her. And this is one of the first ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From doing brunches in just Florida to now doing brunches across the world. Period. Because, you know, she gets to fly around internationally now, but still work brunches. <laughs> and next up, we have Q, the letter Q. The fact that she made this all herself, it is extremely tailored to her body. It's in a fabric choice that is really exciting and shows up so well with the lights of Drag Race. You know, they often say like, stones and stuff like this. We're so used to that. But when you know TV, you have to understand that light hits it totally differently. Mm -hmm. And the light is yeah. hitting this fabric so beautifully. There's an iridescence to it. And the wig itself, Very. it doesn't quite match the outfit because it gives like armor. And then this is like, kind of this like flapper, like very 1920s Gatsby wig, but it doesn't matter. It works so well. Everything she does is so clean and crisp. I love this look too. I want to follow up on the hair. I like the fact that she chose this hair, which is kind of out of the ordinary when put together with this look, because if she chose a hair that's specifically from that era, then it will look very costumey. But the fact that this hair is so standout-ish, it doesn't look like it's from that period of time that it ends up looking fashiony and artsy. You know what? You're right. You've sold it. You've sold it to me. <laughs> Aside from the hair, back to this look, baby. It is fashion. I love the fact that she took off this headpiece. She reveals her beautiful face with the red makeup. She's been fighting and she's been bleeding. And then as we go down, we see these beautiful queen shoulders that's made from this slimy metallic fabric. The cut on the bust is right. The corset is done right. She has the sword as a prop. And as I go down, I see beautifully done leg braces. Though I do wish that it would have gone into the leg, but that's just me nitpicking. The rouging in the back was done well too, and she has it trailing in back of her. I enjoyed this look a lot. And although it is one color only, she made the entire look very interesting. They say that if an outfit is boring by color, that needs to be interesting by texture. If it's boring by texture, that needs to be interesting by style. If it's boring by style, then you go back to square one, then make the color interesting. Oh, that's brilliant. I also want to give a shout out to the girls that uh, have the body to not pad, just corset mm -hmm. real tight show that off like she still looks very gorgeous and i love it mm -hmm. next up is safira crystal i really think it's a bit simpler in terms of what she's been wearing and what she's been serving in general like the pumpkin and these really grand 
large silhouetted looks that I'm used to her, but like, girl, we only have so much room in our suitcases. I don't blame her. So this one was more concept focused, but I think it's gorgeous. I know that she had to steam the fuck out of this before bringing it on. There's a lot of exciting angles and lines to this dress. Is it the most exciting thing I've ever seen? No, it is in like a very simple, solid fabric, but the gag of the pussycat turning into Dr. Evil, I was not expecting that. And I think kudos to that because if I had just saw that and then she left, I would have been pretty underwhelmed because it's just simple for her, but I do like it. Yeah, I agree. This is a paler color than we're used to seeing on Safira because we see her in a lot of bold colors, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of color, I don't really care for it, but I get the reference. It's a reference of the original look. So that's why she used this color. This dress hugs her beautifully. It is well made, it hits the floor, plus the black lining. So great job on that to contrast. It could be viewed as just a classic pageant dress, but the fact that she added this Mugler-esque inspiration at the top made it fashion-y. Is she bald, like in real life? No, she has no. hair. Yeah. Wow, okay. Also, we need to shout out the fact that this bald cap is extremely well done. I don't know, or maybe she has hair. I don't know. I haven't seen her in person in a long time. <laughs> I'm trying to look really close because I was like, this is really well done. <laughs> Actually, I take that back. I did see her at Paradise in Asbury Park. So we were in the dressing room together. We were booked together. And I asked her, how was your summer and everything? She said, oh, I took a break from drag for about a month to two months. And I said, why? Is everything okay? Like, I understand. Sometimes we have to take a step back and take a break from drag too. And she said... No, I went to see my mother, and then me being so dumb and stupid, I said to her, it's your mother okay? It's everything okay? Like, everything's fine now, right? And then she said to me again, like this, no, I went to see my mother. Dumb me. I said to her, is she out of the hospital? Yeah. Is she feeling better? <laughs> I know! And then she pulled me and held my hand and she said, <laughs> no, I went to see mother. And then it clicked in my head that she went on to Drag Race. Cause you know, I don't really follow up who is filming Drag Race anymore. And that's probably something you can relate to too after getting on to Drag Race. But yeah, I don't really know if she's really bald. <laughs> if she isn't, that is fabulous. And shout out to the bald cap. Cause doing a bald cap on Drag Race is really hard time wise. Okay, next up on the runway is Dom. Dawn. This is kind of my issue with Dawn and just this style of drag in general, these kind of like maximalist crystal method-esque drag. Sometimes I'm not sure where to look is all. It's super cute. It is super Y2K. It's really fab, but it's very Dawn. It's got these like oversized like sleeves and it's interesting and unique on a fashion sense. But when I'm watching Drag Race and you've got how much is like a runway, maybe 15 seconds to sell me? Or if you're on season 15, two seconds only. Ah! <laughs> tea. <laughs> like a millisecond if you're during the ball, tea. but like T T T T T. I want her to hone in her perspective and it doesn't really tie into the pussycat wig itself. And then let's talk about it. Is this a pussycat wig? For me, it's not a pussycat wig because a pussycat wig it's a lot more simpler than this. I don't think so either. I get the back, okay, cool. It is a really fun, exciting cut. I love it. It's really like Harajuku and, and maybe that's what she was going for. I'm not sure if I'd like it. I don't know, I can't decide. Mm -mm. It's not giving me pussycat wick. Again, a pussycat wick is a little bit more basic than this. Instead, at a first glance, this look is giving me denim, it's giving me patches, it's giving me streetwear, it's giving me 2 a.m. after the club in a good way, <laughs> but I do like this look, but as a category for Pussycat Wick, kind of missing it for me because it has to read at a first glance. And going back to Crystal Method, I do agree with you. She likes to mix a lot of things together, right? During her season, there were still some touches I feel like she could have refined in, but it wasn't until after the season that I feel like she refined the whole art of mixing things together and still look cohesive. Right, coming back to the category, which is Pussycat, it's like, how does that have anything to do with the outfit? Is it because of the animal print? It's a cat, but then you're not really having a Pussycat? I'm not sure. Is individual style enough to check the box off of the runway category? Uh -huh. Especially when you're competing with people of this level that are really putting the theme of the Pussycat wig into their outfits and delivering it as a whole package. That's where I'm just saying that this might miss the mark a little bit. I had the same issue too when I did Drag Race, so, you know, I made the mistake, now I can give advice. Um, <laughs> for my season, for the runways, 
I didn't really pay too much attention to the categories. I just feel like I wear nice outfits and incorporate some of the category into the look, I'll be fine. But the main category is there for a reason. You need to follow it. It needs to stand out and it needs to speak out immediately. Now back to this Dawn look, it doesn't scream pussycat wick at a first glance. And that's what's missing for me. Okay, what about this? What if she comes out kind of like the same take as Morphine? Scratches mm -hmm. of the cat nails, some blood, have a cat or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or a pussycat wig on her head. Something that tells me cat and a short yeah. wig. Or just a cat as a wig. Yeah, if there had been like a solid theme that was running throughout it, then it would have been more successful for sure. Next up is plasma. And is she giving us pussycat wig? Not really. I see a pussycat wick, but it's hidden by a lot of things. And the theme that I'm getting from this is angelic, white. This is giving Hermes. Hermes? Yeah. yeah. Hermes. It's giving that. It's very Grecian. I really, really, really like the dress. If we're just talking about the dress, I think it's adorable. I love that it's pinched at the waist. I love this breast line here. I love the paneled skirt. I think that's very cute. I love gold on a light blue or white. I think it's very angelic. I think it's very Grecian, obviously. It's just too much. It is the sleeves with the boots, with the wings, with the wings on the boots, with the wings on the ears, with the wings on the headphones, which I do not understand at all. And then underneath all of that is this pussycat. Again, the pussycat does not translate to the outfit and the concept as a whole. I will say, amongst other things that she has worn, this did excite me. It's just a bit much. Even though you're a drag queen, we can still kind of pull back, we can still kind of refine. But I will say she does look pretty. There's oftentimes something that looks a little dull or gray in her face. And maybe it's just a young thing about makeup that she's still learning or something like that. I would just really love to see her have some warmth in her face. I love parts of this. I just wish it wasn't all at once. <laughs> so what Denali is basically trying to say is stop trying to be so extra gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you edit. it. I'm just kidding. Yeah, the pussycat wig is kind of beautiful too. We see the shimmer and the glitter. Like, I don't mind it. I like this look, but it's just not giving pussycat wig. But hey, she's working and shorting the outfit like it's nobody's business though. Okay, next up is a mandatory meeting. Girl, okay. Do you want to start with this one? Yeah, sure. I'm confused. I can. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about this. On one hand, I like the fact that she took it to another level and gave us something creative, right? Because every queen did kind of like a pussycat wig or an interpretation of the wig as a pussycat. She comes out as a blue cracked egg with two other eggs on her side. And she's got this nest built around her and she has this dress as a tree. Does it read pussycat wig mm -hmm. right away? Not really. It's not until you look up close, right? Yeah. What I would have done to push the execution is to wear a pussycat wig or cut the wig in half and use it kind of like a beard to cover her face too. So instead of drawing red lips, I would just get rid of the lips and use blue hair too, to seem like, oh, egg is really cracked. It did read to me too. I love the concept. This reminds me very much of like 2017 Chicago club kid drag where it wasn't as refined, just throwing it on and it was really random and it was crunchy and messy, but it was fun and there was a point of view. I get it, but it's almost would have been better if she had gone fully white. The, like the color that we know eggs are maybe and done that and then just have like a white pussycat wig. But what the hell does a pussycat wig have to do with birds and a bird nest? Like, I don't know. That's where I'm like a little lost in the concept and I understand the judge's critique on that. But to me, this is still fun and exciting and definitely more fun than just someone who slapped on a pussycat wig and a nice dress. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just have a soft yeah. spot for Amanda because I'm like, I love, I love a busted queen. <laughs> <laughs> bad drag queen that's just bad at drag. No, I just mean like, I just love to see the processes that is drag growth. There's uh -huh. obvious improvement that we need through like Amanda and like viewing her, but it just takes me <laughs> back to drag and loving drag and not being good and not really caring and just trying to like have a good time. I don't know, she's always just good energy to me. So this look is not great, but like I still am excited as a drag queen by it. It also reads as cracked eggs to me because you know like how in cartoons, the egg, when it cracks, it's got like this at the egg. You know what I mean? Like, ch ch ch. again, I feel like she messed up by putting lips. It should have just been two wigs, you know, become the egg. Don't give me no lips. Otherwise, it just kind of reads as like a beard. Possibly. And what if she extends the dress all the way to the bottom? Mm -hmm. So it just seems like a tree lock 
that goes all the way down, and then we see the roots, right? And then maybe some gloves too, to kind of seem like they're branches too, to complete the look. Mm. Mm-hmm. Next up is Tsunami Mew serving us gender bending realness. Ooh, pussycat wick on fire! We got the red top with this rainbow trim around her and this long fur on one side, these fitted pants and these high boots. Although to some it can be a little bit simplistic, but the category is pussycat wig. And she sold us the pussycat wig with this gender bending look. Ooh, love it. Obsessed with this. If you were to just see this worn on anybody, it would just be like, okay, this is a nice look. It's cool. But it's the way she sells this. Oh my god, like the presentation is everything. First of all, let's talk about her walk. She understands walk. There's nothing too overzealous. There's nothing too like over energetic about it. It is really cool. It is just like oozes coolness. I love it. And this like Spanish bolero cut is very, I love this whole like matador kind of idea. Her jacket that button up together gives me very Mugler, that shape that's very curved. We've been waiting for this moment from Tsunami for so long because it does kind of seem like she's coasting. Well, actually, most of the cast seem like they're coasting because they're mostly just airing the drama between Amanda and Plain Jane. Girl. <laughs> They might not be coasting, but right. you know, because of airtime, it seems like they're coasting. But yeah, the walk literally sold it for me. It's not just about the look sometimes, it's about how you sell the outfit too, and she delivered it. Oh, the little head nods, it is exciting. It's like, what is, does she want me? Does she want me? I kind of want her. <laughs> it's hot. So much to learn on bootleg. And next up on the runway is Plain Jane. I'm conflicted. I like it. But what? Maybe it's the proportions for me. Like when you have big hips, big tiny waist and, and like a pussycat waist. Again, it's just kind of like, how does the pussycat go into the outfit? This could be worn with like sexy long hair with a high pony. Plain Jane, every time she steps on this runway, well, not every time, but most of the times she steps on this runway <laughs> is very refined. I don't know why I don't like it, but for some reason, it's just something a little off about it. I love the mask. I think the mask is super cool. <laughs> I don't mind it. <laughs> I know she was sweating balls in this though. Yeah, latex have no room for breathing, baby. Mm -mm. But I do like this look though. The mouthpiece, oh, orgasmic. But I do agree with you about the part about the wig. This outfit could have been worn with a ponytail, a wig with bangs, curly hair, crimped hair, braids, anything else. That it can replace a pussycat wig. At a first glance, this look reads BDSM or latex or fetish, but I don't mind this hair on this look because the fact that it goes together with it, mm -hmm. this is a safe look. Yeah, it's a safe look. Next up is Geneva Carr, and I love me some Geneva Carr, but this look is just not it. It's all over the place. There's too many colors. There's too many choices made too. We got the rainbow animal color. We got the purple. We got the black. We got the sheer. We got the pants. We got the feathers. Oh my goodness, this is a lot going on. I need her to pick a lane and stick with it. Yeah, it's a check mark on the category, but again, Pussycat has nothing to do with this outfit. She has a flapper wig and flapper bandana on. It's almost as if she just had that dress there and just put it on with the wig. It's not thematic whatsoever. Ugh, I love Geneva. First of all, I worked with her in Brownsville, Texas, which is where my mom is from. And it was so much fun. I had a great time and I love her, but She's from a really small town in, well, it's not small town, but it's like really tucked away almost by the border in Mexico and Texas. And it's club drag. It reminds me of when you're starting out the like things that you find beautiful and the things that you're inspired by are the things that you're just circulated by, which is a lot of sequin and stretch fabric and cheap fabrics, these like rainbow leopard fabrics. And just all of her drag so far has given me very like, just club girl starting out, very new. And that's hard when that's like all you know and that's your references. We're not got Mick where you're just exposed to like Vogue all the time and these incredible runways and fashion shows and these things like this. So I understand where she comes from, but ugh, Drag Race has just pushed itself to such a new level. You have to educate yourself on these things and it's just not quite there for her. My heart goes out to her because I totally know this queen. What did she say in her verse? She was like, uh, uh watch out for this car because I'm gonna run you over or something like that. I'm just like, I don't know. I like her. She's crazy. <laughs> we can't hate on this look too much because Geneva's only source for fashion is YouTube by watching boat like opinions. And we're not even serving anything <laughs> either. <laughs> Girl, 
I know. I'm, I'm in a t-shirt in my hotel room. <laughs> oh, girl. Y'all want to see me without this mask, girl? Oh, my God. I don't even do makeup under this mask. There's, like, makeup only from here to here. <laughs> okay, back to this look. I've done two colors only, either black and purple, or black and a colorful animalistic color. Otherwise, it's just too much going on. My eyes don't know where to look. And in the back, she got the fabric, too. What the hell? And then in the front, the legs don't go all the way down to her shoes, so it cuts her leg off. And then at the top, we see this flapper feather... Lord have mercy. The look itself, it's a no for me, but we do see a pussycat wig though. I don't know if that means anything because the look itself is just so bad. It actually is a beautiful silhouetted dress. It's just the fabric choices. And yeah, you're right. It's just like one quill in the headband. Yeah, if she'd have gone full flapper, great. Or if she would have gone with the leopard and done pussycat, great. But the mix of them, I'm just confused. <laughs> you know what I love about some of these runways is that they could be wearing some of the and ugliest outfits too, right? But they have to walk down the runway as if they are the S-H-I-T. To be honest, this team should be very lucky and glad that they won the challenge because besides Nymphia, uh, the other three just were not really serving on the runway at all. Next on the runway is Maya Iman Lepage. Ugh. Again, we're talking about Miami. We're talking about the gigs. We're talking about what you do. It was kind of mm. Lala and I's problem when we went on Drag Race. We were mm -hmm. the lip sync girls in our city. We were meant shout to, to do this many shows. Yeah. So shout out to Lala. Shout out to lip sync girls. Everything in your closet is stretch and it's a dance costume and it's easy. It's fast. It's go. It's not va va boom. It's not all the way out there. But I think that that creates good art for Drag Race. You've got the Got Mix and you've got the Violets. And you've got these amazing queens with these amazing garments. But then you also got a club girl that's just trying to make coin and she's trying to get by. And this was in her closet. <laughs> she's wearing a pussycat wig though. <laughs> she is wearing a pussycat wig and she wears it good. She wears a <laughs> bowl cut like it's nobody's business. Like, you better eat that bowl cut. The dress is pretty atrocious. This is just, it's again, what you're surrounded by when you get on Drag Race. You're surrounded by other drag queens that are learning how to sew. And this was definitely like a friend who learned how to sew, made something quick for her, da 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 da. Uh, but it is a brunch twill outfit. It is something that is just meant to be worn between tables. I'm sorry. But girl, shout out to you rocking that bowl because she can rock a bowl. And her bars were really good in her verse. Well, I have one comment about this look and you stole that away from me. And the comment is, she looks like she's ready for brunch in this look and this hair. <laughs> right, I know. I do see a pussycat wig, but this outfit is not enough for me. It is a well done outfit, but it's not exciting to me. It's giving me brunch, it's giving me the second seating during brunch, and you're just gonna throw on something comfortable, including a pussycat wig, and you're just gonna throw on something comfortable. It's not enough for me for Drag Race. But she is beautiful though, for brunch. Next up is Megami, and she's serving you fairy creature realness. Not it for me, sorry. I see a pussycat wig that is beautifully done though, but this look uh. doesn't look complete. It looks like it's in the middle of getting made and they didn't have time. So they sent it to Megami and Shorori down the runway. Don't like this color with the white. And then when she turns around, we see these small dinky little wings. <laughs> hmm, it's a no for me. Ugh, it's just frustrating. I don't understand any of these choices at all. The belt, this lace almost looks torn at the bottom, even though it's not. This gives very cheap, very Leg Avenue, Santi Alley. Uh, seeing all of her undergarments under this sheer thing is just really taking me out. And those wings, the wings, they give kind of like, remember in Hercules when the dog just sprouts its wings? Is it a dog? No, it's a horse. When the baby horse just barely sprouts its wings and they're they're like <laughs> flapping and it's like it's like hovering in the air ever so like barely like that's kind of what it's giving it's just so minuscule and i saw her post this on instagram and they have much bigger gorgeous wings now and i was just like okay work that's what it should have been but i really just like this look i'm so confused yeah those wings for a two-year-old not for a queen baby but i will give her props for selling it with a wand you know her trying to fluff those wings and you know there's a pussycat wig. <laughs> Don't like the look though. She's trying to fly. I feel bad, but no. Last up on the runway is Nymphia Wind. This is so cool and so exciting. I loved this so much. Oh my God. Okay, another bald cat, by the way. So hard to do on Drag Race. There's so much that we can talk about with this. It's actually a bit much. You know what, me too. 
yeah. yeah, but I'll let you go. It is so amazing. The dress is so beautiful, tailored to her body so well. I love the nude side panels that give you like this peekaboo, but there's lace on them. So it almost looks like it's tattooed on her skin. Very obviously not to her heritage. I will say the mixed concept of like a on her head with this really gorgeous, respectful outfit towards her culture. Those two are kind of clashing to me. It could have been really well done without the final reveal, but I love the reveal from the hat to the black with the actual cat to the actual pussycat. It should have stopped at the actual pussycat. The red pussycat wig is unbelievably beautiful. There's like so many tiny little finger waves in it. It's so successful. It just needed one inch of editing and I think it was that final reveal. I don't think she needed the on her head. It would have still been a very respectful kind of gorgeously cultural look. And uh, yeah, I just don't, I didn't love the like. <laughs> Yes, honey, she is dripping in red and she is ready to read for filth, or should I say red for filth. Now, this look is very respectful to the culture and she glamorized it and glorified it in this cheap how. When she takes off the hat, I wish that she would have used those fortune gold cats, you know what I'm talking about? <gasps> yes. Uh -huh. I think it would have read yes. right away, but the fact that she had a black pussy uh, cat underneath, it didn't read right away to me that it was a cat until 10 seconds later. And I think she could have took one reveal away, either the red wig or the bajajay. Now it just seems like reveal after reveal after reveal. But hey, this queen is slaying it. So beautiful. And our favorite look is Nymphia. Is that good? And why, Denali? Oh, my bad. And our favorite look is Nymphia. She literally is just so miles ahead of everybody. Just the taste level, the articulation, and the smallest details, putting everything together. Yes, this one could have used the tiniest bit of editing maybe, but overall is so successful. There's multiple reveals. Yeah, love it. And Denali, thank you so much for doing bootleg opinions with us. Oh my God, suggested copy. I love doing bootleg copy. I, I love doing bootleg opinions. <laughs> She's held at gunpoint currently in her hotel room. And her grandmother is currently held hostage in my basement. <laughs> Not even. Denali, enjoy bootleg. <laughs> I was gonna say bootleg Canada. Denali, thank you so much for doing bootleg. Now enjoy Canada and I'll see you very soon via Zoom. Thank you, sweetheart. Love you. Bye. Bye. Hey, squirrel friends, when one video ends, just click on another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead, I support you.